Hello and welcome. Please like and subscribe to our videos to help our channel grow. This video here will be dedicated to the hybrid thumb ring. Three areas that I will cover today. How to measure it, the design aspect of the thumb ring, and how to use. So this will be the ring that we'll be talking about. And we'll be looking at it from a very close point of view. If you're interested to place an order for this thumb ring, there are three measurements that are required from you. The first is the width of your thumb here at the joint. The second is the thickness of the thumb at the joint. And lastly would be the length between the crease of the joint to the tip of the thumb. Just a hint when you make these measurements, when you measure the width, try to pull the skin down as so. By pulling it down, you can get a cleaner measurement of the joint from one end to the other. Do the same when you measure for the thickness. Simply pull the skin down gently to the other side and measure. Now we discuss the design aspect of the hybrid thumb ring. It is inspired by three other rings, the Vermil Turkish, the Vermil Lotus, and the Persian ring from Mikata thumb rings. The Vermil Turkish ring is a very small ring, and as a result, when you use it, it doesn't get in the way as you knock the arrows. As you can see, it is very small in profile. Therefore, the hybrid thumb ring is essentially the same size inspired by the Turkish thumb ring. As you can see here, they are almost the same size. However, the Turkish thumb ring seems to not work very well for me. And that's because this angle here is completely flat. And when I place the string here, it tends to slide inwards to my, towards my thumb and that hurts. So after many tries and over a long time, I've concluded that the only way that I'm going to be able to use this is to place a piece of leather on the inside. Um, and that's very much similar to many, the way that many Turkish archers use their Turkish thumb rings. Uh, the leather piece here would serve as a, a form of string guard to protect against the string digging into the, into the thumb. But uh, I do not like such solution because I feel that it is not a very clean, elegant way. Uh, when, you need, when you need a piece of leather, you might as well just get a guarded ring. So this is actually what I prefer to use, the Vermil Lotus Ring. And the lotus ring is actually very similar like a Turkish ring, just the lip here is longer and the top here is curvier. So it provides sufficient angle for the string to balance on and not climb into my thumb. Therefore, I actually love this ring and I've been using this one for quite a while. The limit of this thumb ring, however, is that because the lip is very long compared to the Turkish, as you can see, substantially longer. So when you knock the arrow, this lip here can actually get in the way. Also, because the slope here is not very steep, so I have to keep a very shallow hook to prevent the string from biting into my thumb. Sometimes as I get tired, it is possible that I may actually hook just a little bit too tightly and by, uh, by changing the degree of, of hooking the string, I may actually drive the string into my skin and it can hurt. So while it's good, it seems to be less forgiving if I am inconsistent with the way that I hook. So, 
inspired by that, I modified this design here such that it has the slope very much like the lotus ring, as you can see the angle there, and you can also see a dip in this here, you can see the curvature there, same with the hybrid, yeah, see that? Okay, yeah, it's not easy to get it, but it's just a little bit of slope down. So that curvature there is what provides uh, some forgiveness. This has a greater slope than this. So that means the string would want to slide off for most of the angle, even as I tighten my hook. So even when I tighten this, the angle here is sufficient to keep the arrow, uh, the string from running into my skin. So even though I'm supposed to be using this in a shallow hook, but sometimes as I get tired and I might bring this deeper in, it still provides a forgiveness and it will not dig into my skin. Uh, so I'm able to use this ring with a shallow hook and more of a medium hook, but not a deep hook. So that degree, the freedom uh, between a shallow and medium hook would allow me to not have any pain, uh, even when I'm not very consistent with my technique. And lastly, this Persian ring from Mikata Farm Rings, originally it doesn't have this collar. So back then I am not very good with uh, guardless rings, so I requested to, to have this collar built for me. Um, but that is not required. So what matters on this ring here is this triangle profile. This triangle profile here, I'm not sure you can see it. I kind of sanded it down a little bit so it is not as sharp. So what happens when the string sits across this and when you pull it back, the string wants to climb from the larger edge of the triangle towards the smaller tip of the triangle. So that means the string would want to always want to go out. It wants to release. And that is good for me because now as I pull the string back, there's more pressure on my thumb. But the string would want to pull away from my thumb. And that relieves any pain on my thumb. So that is why when you use this ring, when we hook the string, you have to actually do a twist, uh, a twist from the wrist towards the arrow so that the string will sit on this slope. If you don't, it will try to climb down this triangle and release. So when I do the demo, pay attention to me mentioning about twisting. So you have to twist towards the arrow, which pushes the string tight against the surface of this triangular slope. Now I'll show you how to use this hybrid thumb ring. First of all, we close the three fingers here and then we put the ring around the string and in contact with the arrow. Okay, In contact with the arrow. Then use this index finger to just cover over the thumb in a shallow hook configuration. So let me show you from this view, this is how it looks like. From the other side, this is how it looks like. Okay, like this. Uh, maybe from another angle, like this. Oh, that's my dog. All right, so that's uh, this is how the shallow hook will look like when you hook this ring around the string. Now, the important trick of using this ring is that you actually have to turn your wrist inwards towards the arrow and that's because the string will constantly want to try to uh, move away from the thumb and uh, release by itself so to, to avoid the accidental release we need to twist inwards to keep the string 
on the ring. Okay, I'm not sure if uh, it's gonna show on the camera, but I'm gonna try to do the twist. Okay, I'm gonna try to twist in. Okay, so that's how you're gonna twist as you draw. Now, the process is after we hook, we close the index finger, we draw a little bit first, and then we do the twist. Okay, we draw a little bit first, and then we do the twist and continue drawing. And now I'm gonna do the, sh the full demo and uh, I hope the camera will catch it enough for you to follow. Okay. One more time. 